Welcome to HCS Talks. I'm your host, Superintendent of Hampton City Schools, Raymond Haynes. This is our second season of HCS Talks, our Hampton City Schools podcast. Our goal is to educate, inform, and entertain not just our local community, but also listeners far and wide. In each episode, we dive into a variety of topics, from education and student success to the hard work of our teachers, support staff, parents, and community partners. We will also shine a spotlight on different community programs, initiatives, and more, offering valuable insight for everyone. To our loyal listeners, thank you for your continued support. And if this is your first time tuning in, welcome. We hope you will stick around and keep listening to HCS Talks. Today, I have the opportunity and pleasure to sit down with the president of Christopher Newport University, which is actually my alma mater, President William Kelly. President Kelly began his tenure on July 1, 2023, and is CNU's sixth president. Did I get that right, sir? You got it right, sir. All right. So welcome, President Kelly. Thank you for joining us today on HCS Talks. Before we dive into our discussion, please introduce yourself to the listening audience. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Haynes. I appreciate the opportunity to be here with you today. Yes, sir. Um, so as, as you said, my name is Bill Kelly. I come to uh, Christopher Newport University for just over a year now. Um, after 36 years in the United States Coast Guard, I'm um, originally from uh, from New York. I was born in the Bronx and grew up just north of New York City. All right. Uh, when I turned 18, I went off to the Coast Guard Academy in uh, New London, Connecticut. And um, 40 years later, <laughs> I took off the uniform on June 30th um, after being superintendent at the United States Coast Guard Academy. So the Coast Guard Academy is a lot like the Naval Academy or West Point. Yes. Had that opportunity for four years. And... Um, Retired on June 30th and started on 1 July. So it was a great evening. My wife and I really enjoyed my retirement, and uh, <laughs> and I started my new job, and my wife and I have loved every minute of it. I must say, in my being a captain for life, it's been nothing but impressive in terms of your taking on the helm as, Chris, as Christopher Newport's sixth president, sir. And, and my interactions with you have been very positive, and I'm looking forward to the great things that you will do during your tenure there at CNU. So. You actually were in, in our, one of our previous conversations, you actually were in Newport News before, right? Yes, we were. Yeah, my wife and I were stationed here from 91 to 94. Uh, I was stationed up at uh, the Coast Guard Base in Yorktown, uh, Virginia. And um, my first son was born at Riverside Hospital. Wow. We bought our first house here on, uh, on Boxley, uh, about a mile from Menchville High School. And, you know. It was just really good memories here. And so when the opportunity presented itself, we always thought this was a place that we'd like to come back to. Yes, sir. And you came back. We did. We were selected to come back. Yeah. We hope you will stay I'd for th- many, many, I, many years. You know, we moved 15 <laughs> times in the military. And uh, moving's hard. Yes, sir. And, uh, you know, if we can stay here for a long time, that would be a good time for us. <laughs> well, I hope so. I, I hope, hope so, too. So. so what inspired you, President Kelly, to pursue a career in education and eventually take on the role as university president? Yeah, I think that, I think that goes back to that, that time when we, we talked about um, being stationed here. So I was an instructor. Uh, in the Coast Guard. And, and uh, you know, I came from a family of teachers. My dad was a teacher. Uh, other aunts and uncles were teachers. And both of my wife's parents were teachers. And so, you know, education was always something that was kind of in our DNA. Um, and that three-year experience in Yorktown really inspired me to to uh, pursue it. So I had an opportunity to go off to graduate school at Florida State University in the education program there, and then uh, continue to serve. When I wasn't serving on ships in the Coast Guard, I was usually in a training or education opportunity. Um, and I was the, you know, the, I, I, maybe my only claim to fame is I'm the only officer in the Coast Guard who's ever commanded Officer Candidate School, which is uh, about where 50% of the officers come through. Boot camp, uh, which we all kind of know from the movies, uh, right. which is in Cape May, New Jersey, and then superintendent of the Coast Guard Academy. So, you know, that that history of, of being able to see the development in young people and seeing moms and dads show up and just, you know, so inspired about the growth that their children were going through um, and the opportunity to engage with students. You know, my wife and I, we were, uh, you know, we, we were in charge of the Coast Guard Academy during COVID. That was not an easy time for any of us. But no. it was just, you could really see the impact that you could have on young people and the impact young people can have on you. And so when the opportunity came to, uh, I knew I had to retire from the Coast Guard. 
uh, we were looking around for opportunities in higher ed or secondary education. And there were a couple out there, uh, but there were none like Christopher Newport University. <laughs> Your alma mater is yes, a pretty sir. special place. Yes, sir. And uh, my wife and I drove down here uh, for a retirement ceremony for a buddy of ours up in Yorktown. And we said, hey, let's go down and check out the university. And uh, it was it was May, so it was pretty quiet. And we just uh, drove around and we had a, a former Coastie kind of give us a tour. And we're like, hey. This is this is something we got to be all in on, and so we were all in on the interview process and and uh, you know learning about the university. And every time we kind of turned the page and learned something new, we realized that the core values and the institution align very closely to our core values and, and the institutions that we had belonged to for for you know the vast majority of our adult life or all of our adult life. And so um, I worked really hard at the interview process, and I uh, was very felt very fortunate to uh, to be selected to be the sixth president. Well, I believe the university is very fortunate to have you as oh, well. Thanks, sir. Just in looking at things that I see on social media, although I'm not a big social media person, but when I am able to look to see what CNU is displaying, I see a lot of you engaging and having dialogue with students and out and about around the campus. So what is that like for you? Yeah, that's that's the best part of the day, right? So this morning we do, uh, we do a Wednesday walk with the president. And uh, last year when I came into the job, you know, I wanted to connect. I wanted to listen and learn. Uh, and I would offer that anybody walking into a new position, right? We all come in with a lot of energy about what we want to do. But, but if just take a moment, just listen and learn from the people who've been there. And so I said, how can I engage with the students? And uh, President Ryan up at UVA does runs with Jim. And I said, I, I love to run, but I, I wanted to bring more people into it. Right. And so, uh, you know, we did the first walk and I was like, gosh, I hope 10 people show up. <laughs> I came around the corner and there was 40 people there and, wow. and it's been, it's been a great showing every Wednesday. Um, and when I'm not there, the provost steps in for me and, and makes it happen. But today it was raining and we had about 25 students show up at the field house and we just walked the track for a half an hour. So they just um, talk about various things. Just talk or... about various things and, and really, you know, I, <laughs> I learned about some of the, the issues that we're having in, in one of the residence halls. Uh, you get you know, it all. <laughs> uh, you, you get it all. You know, I talked to a young lady who's a transfer student. Uh, you know, and how was her experience, you know, coming in? Because we, we want to make sure everybody feels like they belong there. Right. Right. You and I both know that you can join a great organization, but if you feel excluded, you know, you're going to leave. Yes. And we don't want any of our students. We don't want any of our faculty and staff to leave. We work so hard to recruit them. Uh, we want them to have a great experience like you had, and I see so many students having. So the students, my wife says the students are the sprinkles on top of life. Oh, and, absolutely. And I, right? I yeah, I'm sure you that. see that, right? I your opportunity that. to engage yes. with students yes. has to be the best yes. part of your day. It absolutely is, and and you get a good sense of uh, the pulse and climate of the uh of the school system as a whole, and I'm sure with you as a univer at the university. So there's no better way to know how things are going than right. to talk, talk directly to the, to the young That's people. Right. Um, I think that um, in looking at your interactions and working with students, it also helps, like you mentioned, that whole retention aspect. So it's not just about a young person choosing to come to Christopher Newport University. You also have been intentional around your work in ensuring that they stay That's right. and feel like they belong and they actually graduate as well. So you wanna talk a little bit about your retention efforts. Too. Yeah, so our retention efforts, the good news is I inherited a great university. You know, from the beautiful facility that we see on Warwick Boulevard right. uh, to the great you know, uh, athletic facilities we have. But even more important about our university is the people. Mm -hmm. um, and Dr. Lisa Duncan Rains and her whole team, Dr. Kevin Hughes and his team, our, our entire academic team, our folks are really, really committed to our students. Mm -hmm. We make sure they get great internships. We make sure they get great jobs. But it starts literally week one when right. they show up. We have core advisors for that first year that a freshman is on campus. And that's their advisor for the year. And they're required to meet with them multiple times. And I think it starts right there. Like that, mm -hmm. that culture of caring about our students is so critically important. Um, and so our, you know, our retention from year one to year two is over 80%. Our graduation rate is right around 80%. That's way above the national average for, uh, you know, four-year colleges and universities. Wow. And I think it starts with great people truly caring about the mission. And there are so many captains for life that are on that campus. Yes, you know, sir. So they're bought yes, in. Sir. They're all yes, in on that, that university yes, sir. or our university. Yeah. So you mentioned the mission. So can you share a bit about the history and mission of CNU and what sets it apart from 
other institutions. So we're, we're, we're pretty young. <laughs> you know, I mean, we're, we're in a state that, you know, in the Commonwealth here where you got William and Mary, the second oldest right. university in the nation. Right. Uh, you know, they go back, they go back a ways. Yes. Um, and so Christopher Newport was a, originally a community college under William and Mary, mm-hmm. uh, established in 1960. Our first class opened September 18th, 1961, uh, in a small building, uh, in, in Newport news down the right. road from us, uh, moved to campus in the mid sixties and then, uh, became independent from William and Mary in 77 and a university in 92. Uh, so, you know, you, you know, that's kind of where you're going. I was the first graduating class. There you go. Newport, 1992. And before we even had uh, residence halls on campus, right? Yes, there were no dorms Yeah, because that was 95. And when I entered or was accepted, it was Christopher Newport College. College, so, yeah. And then it went to yeah. university in 92. And yeah. we were the first class coming out of right? there. Yes, sir. Yep. And uh, I actually played baseball against CNC. Um, I was a, I played baseball for the Coast Guard Academy. And so we came down here every spring break and, uh, we lost all four years to the captains cause captains <laughs> win a lot. We know that. Uh, but, but, uh, you know, not 92 and then, and then president triple came in the, in the late nineties, uh, significant investment. You know, what I hear from every captain for life, you know, especially the CNCers, it doesn't look anything like when you went to school. No, there. it does not. And it's offering me to navigate because there were so few buildings when I was there. But coming onto the campus now, I actually have to ask for directions <laughs> about where things are because it's vastly different yeah. from when I was there. But it's different in a very positive and, and fantastic way, too. It's a beautiful campus. It is. So as the president of CNU, how would you describe your leadership approach? Yeah, so that's, you know, after 36 years in the military and, you know, one of the things that I think we, and I'm going to speak, and I'm sure you have some military family and dependent listeners on, we don't give ourselves credit for what we learn in the military. But as I made the transition to civilian life, um, I realized that a lot of things that I learned or just became second nature. Um, and, and I would say the two things that I, I believe are most important for myself as a leader, for any leaders, is one, you have to be inclusive, Mm -hmm. right? You have to make sure that every member of your team has an opportunity to show up every day as their best self. And and you as the leader of the organization, whether it's the superintendent or the president, we have to set the culture that that folks need to feel like they included, they belong, and that they can give their full effort. Whether it's a team, whether it's a classroom, whether it's an organization, nobody wants anybody operating at less than that. So making sure everybody understands that that's, that's the goal. And then the other, the other thing that I've really found over 40 years is you just got to show up. All right. Right. Sometimes as a leader, you know, you and I have the opportunity to get in front of big audiences all the time, but sometimes it's just as important to be sitting in the back row, right. Your or presence. spend a moment. Yes. Yeah. Just, yes. you know, talking to a, talking to a student, mm-hmm. talking to a, to a parent, mm-hmm. talking to a faculty member, you know, so, but you can't have those discussions if you don't show up. Right. So, right. you know, you got to show up mm-hmm. um, and, and that takes time, but that's what our job is. Our mm-hmm. job is to show up. Putting that time in as well. But uh, I'd be remiss again if I didn't mention your interactions with students. That is quite impressive. I can't recall during my time as a college student, even graduate student, that number one, I didn't even know who the president was, <laughs> let alone actually having walks with him or her throughout that time. So I certainly don't want you to sell yourself short in the impact that you're making in your interactions with young people as a whole, too. So, President Kelly, what partnerships or hands-on opportunities are available to students, such as internships or collaborations with local schools or our community, or even the uh, community captains? Community captains program, right? So that's, you know, you and I and the vice mayor had an opportunity to have a Really nice conversation a couple weeks back. Yes, sir. Uh, so the Community Captains Program is a program that Christopher Newport started uh, five years ago, now going into six, uh, with Newport News Public High Schools and an Achievable Dream Academy. And it provides students as they come out of their sophomore year in high school to progress into this program that's going to prepare them for college and it's going to prepare them for life after high school. Uh, we're going to, we're pretty proud. We're going to graduate our first uh, community captains in December wow. in three and a half years. I just want to make sure that that's out there. Uh, it's not a, uh, not a late graduation. It's an early graduation. That's right. Three just, and a half years. I just think it speaks to the, uh, the talent that's in our, in our region. You know, we, we, we believe that between the Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel and Bush Gardens, there is a tremendous amount of opportunities here with business and industry from Newport New Shipbuilding to HII to, uh, to Langley, you know, to NASA, 
to Cannon, to Ferguson, to Riverside, you, you keep naming them, right? Uh, tremendous opportunities. And then the opportunities to engage uh, with our, with our, with our public schools. Um, you know, we are, we have a master's of arts and teaching program right now that I know provides teachers to both Newport news and Hampton. Uh, and we are, we are moments away from being able to announce uh, a bachelor of science and, and, uh, and undergraduate, not undergraduate education, but elementary education. Uh, so we're going to start producing teachers for the Commonwealth, but we really hope it's teachers for the region. Cause this is an amazing place to live, you know, to grow and to really put down roots and, 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 uh, develop your family right, and, right. and and then come back to Christopher Newport and join That's us right. for homecoming, you That's know, right. uh, in October and all those things. So, um, we just signed an agreement with Riverside hospital. Uh, it's a three plus two agreement. So we're going to start, uh, having, uh, a nursing degree, uh, bringing that back. So that that's so important. Uh, you know, we know about the shortage in, in, in nurses. So there are an array of opportunities. I would say to any of the business and industry leaders out there, you know, if you're looking for someone, uh, to come in and, 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 get an internship and hopefully follow on Christopher Newport's the place to go. We're number seven in the nation for internships. Wow. Uh, that's amazing, right? I mean, amazing. you know, we got this, you know, public regional university in Southeastern Virginia and, and we're number seven in the in nation. The nation. In the nation. Pretty cool. So looking, we're, we're very excited about the uh, possibilities with the uh, education program and just mentioning the nursing program as well, two areas or industries that we know we had a major shortfall for. Yeah. And I think that just speaks volumes to your being intentional about helping to shape uh, future educators and future folks who are in the uh, healthcare industry too. Uh, and you and I have talked about the academies of Hampton that yeah. we have, 16 academies, 44 pathways. One of the academies is the Academy of Teaching, Education, and Learning. Great. So we will talk more about we will connecting talk more. with uh, CNU and what you all will perhaps be offering in the very near future. Then, of course, connecting with our Governor's Health Sciences Academy. And that speaks to young people who are interested in the medical field from various aspects. Many are interested in the nursing program Great. as well. Great. So it fits right into what our young people are preparing for. And we talk about our young people being the portrait of a Hampton graduate, being college, career, and life ready. So I'm looking forward to connecting with you further as well and looking at how we can tie in seeing you and and it being impactful to the young people in Hampton City Schools. Too. Well, we appreciate and that. And I'm, I'm sort of biased. I am a captain for yes, life. Yes, you and are. I am going to talk with our <laughs> young people as often as I can about looking at Christopher Newport University as a possible option for your well, we, place you to know, uh, we want to be the, degree. We want to be the hometown university yes, for the sir. peninsula. Yes, sir. Right? I mean, we're here. We have a great, great facility, great university, great faculty and staff. You know, our, our students don't have to go far and wide. They can get a great education here. And then stay here, get a great job, uh, and really contribute and give back to our local community. And yes, I know that's sir. what both of us are looking for. Yes, sir. Absolutely. What is also impressive, I know that you have connected to and 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 have great relationships with the local university presidents and colleges around here as well. I'm not sure if you've met uh, – Dr. Porter Brandon at oh, VPCC. Oh, yeah. Porter and I are, yep. And yep. then I know President Williams and you have a, a, yes, we have a great relationship as well. So you want to talk a little bit about sure, your yeah. connections with the- You uh, know, I think Porter is, uh, well, she's a New Yorker, so she's yes. she's great, right? I mean, you know, we we, we, we have a lot you of fun about that. Instantly. We do, we instantly, right? Good pizza and, yes, and where to get yes. a good bagel. But, you know, I was surprised at how few community college students we had at Christopher Newport. Mm -hmm. um, and and that was, I don't want to say it was intentional, but it wasn't intentional that we were opening up the pathways and to, uh, to our community college students. And, and so, you know, as Porter and I were talking, well, we, we identified an opportunity there. And so we signed an MOU with her, uh, and with, and with, uh, Virginia, uh, Virginia Peninsula Community College, um, back in the fall, uh, actually it was in the winter. We actually had them over for a basketball game. We, we hosted their basketball team. They played before our national championship basketball team. And uh, we signed it at halftime. It was great. Um, you know, the Gators were over there playing and, yes. and they won their game. And then the captains won their game. Um, but that has already opened the pipeline. Uh, just from February till, till the arrival of this class, we ended up having over 180, over 185, transfer community college students show up wow. last year we had 150 right so you know just just with a little bit of effort and so we just signed an agreement with uh, tidewater community college as well uh to build that partnership 
um, to get those, you know, that get those young women and men to come through the tunnel and, and join us up here. So, you know, we need to build those bridges because everybody has their own pathway to success. You're right. You're right. right? And, and we all know that there's certain reasons why students go to community college and certain reasons why students don't go to college. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been so impressed with four or five students that I've met that, you know, look a little bit older. I've seen them on the walks or mm-hmm. on campus and they're retired, uh, not retired, but they've done their time in the military. And then they went to VPCC and then they were looking for a place to go pursue their, you know, four year bachelor's degree. And they chose Christopher Newport, right. um, the goalie on our hockey team last year. You know, I met him and his <laughs> wife. His wife is a uh, enlisted member over at, uh, over with the air force over at Langley. And um, you know, I'm, chatting with them and you know he's 28 years old what a great asset to have on our campus oh, with the experiences is. that he yes, has yes yeah yes. so wow. we want to get more of those type of students and you know this this opportunity here is very special today because it allows us to to let folks know that our doors are open the welcome mat is out you know we get a lot of students from northern virginia and from richmond that's great right. we don't want to lose them All right but we want to get more students from our local hometown to come to their hometown university and I think with you at the helm, that will indeed increase. Well, I appreciate that. Yes, sir. So what trends, President Kelly, do you see shaping the future of higher education? Yeah, you you know, because you, you see it with your graduates. Right. There's fewer of them, mm-hmm. right? There's fewer There's fewer high school students. Uh, right now, the, the uh, value of a college education is not what it was when you and I mm-hmm. went through school, right? Mm-hmm. There was no question, right? Right. We were going right. to figure out how to go. And you and Ty talked yes. about that, right? Yes, yes. We didn't want to go to college, but we knew we had to go to college. Yes. And, yes. And, and it turned out okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but today, uh, and, and, our, and our bigger flagship institutions are getting larger and larger. Um, you know, I'm reading some reports that we're getting, and, and they have expanded tremendously, which is great for them. But if you want to get a personalized education, if you want to be in a classroom with t- about 20 students, get to know your faculty member, not have a TA teaching you or whatever, you know, come to Christopher Newport University. Right. Because the trend is the big, or, big guys are getting bigger. Mm-hmm. Um, there's fewer students. And uh, it's, it's getting very, very challenging mm-hmm. to, to uh, as a regional public university across the nation, uh, to, to, you know, continue to provide the services you want to provide. The good news is, Christopher Newport University is solid. We're on stable ground, uh, and and I want to continue to welcome in students from all different backgrounds and be on a campus where you feel like you belong, you feel like you're included, and you can be your best self. Wow. Wow. I can agree to everything you just said. All right. Well, thanks, sir. (laughs) And I can be a true testament to what Christopher Newport has to offer as well. So it is my understanding that the university is looking to launch we mentioned the new teacher education program. Anything else you want to share about that? With regards to the teacher education program, I think uh, we're, in, we're in a great space there. Uh, what you may not know, because you can't really see it from Warwick Boulevard, um, is we're, we're building an 83,000 square foot science and engineering research center. Wow. Uh, Commonwealth funded uh, because they see the need to invest um, and, and that STEM education, those STEM opportunities, this place is going to be amazing. We just did the topping off ceremony. So the last beam went into place. Um, we'll, we'll be open for classes in January 26, two story drone lab. So wow. we're going to be able to do drone research. The only one in Virginia, uh, in the state university system, um, you know, maker spaces, uh, classroom spaces, the latest lab technology. So if you're a young, young person thinking, Hey, you know, I want to go get you know, the best education in the STEM arena that I could possibly get. And I don't want to be in a classroom with two or 300 other people. Christopher Newport University is the place to come. It absolutely is. So, President Kelly, is there anything else you'd like to share with the listening audience? Well, I just I, I just want to say I appreciate the opportunity to be with you today. You know, we've met a couple times. Yes, sir. We had an opportunity to recognize you as a uh, an alumni award winner. Yes, sir. Uh, back in August, which was which was great. Yes, sir. Um, and, and a very it. humbling experience well, for me. But, uh, but but the right thing to do. And yes, I just sir. you know I just appreciate the opportunity. You know, you you want to be that hometown university, um, and and I recognize that that we we, we got to work at that. We yes, got some sir. work to do. Yes, sir. And I appreciate so much the opportunity to be here with you today and share some thoughts on what we're working on. Well, I appreciate your taking the time out of your what I know to be a very busy schedule to come and share some insights oh, this about is great. what it means this to is be great. a captain in yeah. uh, the college and university as a whole. So I thank you for being with us. I am certain our listeners have come away with some valuable information and insights from our discussion. 
whether they are a pr prospective student, parent, or a community member, just recognizing what Christopher Newport University and the captains are all about. And again, I can't say it enough, I am a captain for life. So thank you again for your time, President Kelly. Thank you. This is this is wonderful. Yes, sir. And to our listeners, remember education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. As one community, one transformation, we will ensure academic excellence for every child, every day, whatever it takes. We will catch you next week. Listen to learn more about Hampton City Schools. New episodes of HCS Talks drop on Thursdays. Subscribe and listen to HCS Talks. HCS Talks is a Hampton City Schools production.